me. Go ahead. Hi, Robert. Uh, Bobby from MMA UK. Um, so you're currently on a four-fight win streak, obviously going to be looking for a fifth. Uh, with a run like that at this point in your career, would a return to the UFC ever be something you'd be interested in, or at this point you feel like you might have found a new home in Bellator? Uh, I hope I found a new home in Bellator. I've only fought once for them. This is the second on Friday night. Uh, seem to have treated me really well. Uh, nothing to complain about. So if it, if it all goes to plan, I'd like to finish out my career at Bellator. I think after this fight, I've got another two on the contract. So I'm happy, happy to see this contract out and get a new one with Bellator and hopefully bring the UFC to, uh, bring the Bellator to Scotland. Yeah, I would look forward to seeing that. Good luck in the fight. Cheers. Hi, Matthews. Your line is now live. You're all right, mate. You're all right. Yeah, I'm good. So, obviously, before you used to fight for the UFC, and uh, now you came Bellator. How would mm. you compare the two promotions? Uh, you ever see when you were young and you had you had like two aunties or two grands, and you went to one that was really strict and liked to control everything you done, and then you went to other one and you really got to do what the fuck you want. That's what it seems like with Bellator. I get to do the fuck I want. I turn up, they treat me well in a fight, and that's it. I go home. End of story. What do you want after this fight? Is, do you have any idea if you win this, what you want next? Uh, I, I just said to the other guy, asked me a question in an interview. Uh, I've got two fights left in this contract. Ideally, I'd love to renegotiate after this second fight, after I knock uh, Andrew on and Friday night. Uh, hopefully, that would put me in a good position. Uh, if not, I'll see you at the contract and renegotiate it at the end, but I'm, I'm happy where I'm at Bellaton. It's always good to earn a little extra money, so I'd, I'd, I'd like to get that contract bumped up. And lastly, what level do you feel you are on as a mixed martial artist? Do you feel you're at the highest level you can be at Bellator? Do you feel you can make it to the top? Uh, you can only go with your fight scene. I'm not the judge yet what you guys look at. So you judge me in my performance and going by my performances, I'd say I'm, I'm at the top pretty much already. Uh, there's some tough competition in Bellator and people like to compare organisations to other, other organisations, but every organisation has got dangerous guys right through it, throughout. So you be the judge of what level I'm on. Donna, go ahead. Robert, it feels like Andrew has been around uh, the, the sort of UK MMA scene for a while. How much of, of him do you know? And uh, of course, obviously, his last fight uh, was in Bellator as well. But how much of him have you seen? And, and how do you feel he stacks up against you uh, on Friday night? Uh, he actually fought one of my friends last last time out in Bellator, actually, Grimshaw. Uh, prior to that, he'd fought in a few shows I've fought on. Uh, I've seen him fight a few times. Uh, seems pretty tough, good all-rounder, comes to fight. No one of those guys you need to go chasing, he's going to be standing there in the middle. Much, uh, Pretty much pushing forward all the time, so I'm going to have to go chasing, chasing him for a fight Friday night, I know that. Uh, strangely enough, he's cornered a few times against me, uh, so he actually probably knows more about me than I know about him, because you can watch somebody in television or you can watch somebody in a crowd, you don't really get the, the picture until you're either in there with them or you're part of a corner team that you're against a fighter. Uh, and he's been against me a few times, so he'll probably know more about me firsthand than I know about him. So I'm just looking forward to fighting. It wouldn't matter if it was Andrew Fisher or anybody else there on Friday night. Uh, I'm just looking forward to fighting. It's been two years out uh, with this pandemic going on. And it's, it's been pretty much a nightmare. So I'm, I'm just looking forward. I'm more, more excited just to be here fight week and, and get to fight on Friday night. Uh, so that's, that's most what I'm looking forward to and paying attention to. Do you believe that a win on Friday night sends you into the featherweight top 10? Of course, one of Daniel Vichel or Pedro Carvalho will be coming off of a loss in a couple of weeks. So they'll probably drop out of the rankings. Do you believe that a win here will, will put you into them? Who knows? Who controls the rankings? I don't know. Uh... Oh, Again, it's, it's, not, it's, not my job, it's not my job to put me to put me in there. As I say, I'm just going to go in there, keep fighting, keep knocking people, keep winning. And where you land in the rankings, that's totally up to you guys or whoever, whoever decides that. It's not something I've ever really looked too much in here. Rankings, uh, it doesn't really affect your paycheck. It doesn't really affect much of my life where I'm at. So as long as I perform to my best of my ability, then I'll land where I land in the rankings. Andrew, go ahead. 
Hi, Robert. Nice to speak to you. How you mentioned doing? there about, you know, it's been nearly, what, two years since uh, you fought last. You also had a lot of contract disputes in your previous organization. Mm-hmm. How do you keep motivated at, at the level to get that? And then to come back and give what I think was one of your best performances then against Sam Cecilia when you have so much time? Uh, it's, it's crazy. So I've had time, time out competing, but I've not had time out training. Or That's my life. That's my lifestyle. Uh, I've got another uh, young training partner, Chris, uh, Chris Duncan, who was signed to Bellator as well. And uh, he's hungrier than ever. He's 7-0 at the moment. Uh, there's another one day I don't get a message for him or he's late for training. In the last six to seven years, he's never let me down once. Uh, and when I was younger coming up, I was that guy chasing older guys and you, you felt like you could never let them down. So it's like... I've not even got a choice if I want to go to training. I know I can't let him do. I, I make myself accountable, uh, and he's my main training partner. So it's, I never let him do. He never lets me do. So we're, I've always been in the gym. I've never, I've never been out the gym. It's just I've not been competing. That's it. Uh, but I'm still training as hard as ever. It's just it's a part of my life. So it's a lifestyle. It's no, it's not something I choose to dip my toe in and out. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Robert. Best of luck this weekend. Cheers. James, go ahead. James, are you there? Don't think James is there. <laughs> Move on here. Jay Anderson, go ahead. Can you hear me? Thanks very much, and uh, welcome, uh, welcome back, Robert. Um, you did mention the time away, and I, I'm just wondering because a lot of fighters say that there is nothing that equals, you know, live fight experience. Do you feel that you're able to to keep at your best just training in the gym? Probably not, to be honest. Uh, I think uh, most fighters, if they're honest enough, will say you're better when you're active all the time. Uh, but it's not like it's not like a, it's not like a fight. It's not like a fight at a ten and I go in the gym and I drop to a six. I'm always hovering about firing on all cylinders. So it's it, there is a little bit of a difference, maybe sharpness and stuff like that, and but. You know, it's, I, don't, I don't think it's that important as long as you're training consistently uh, and level-headed like I'm on. I mean, it doesn't wouldn't it matter to me if you were in here in this hotel room fighting or the Wembley Arena on Friday night. You're still going to get the same fight of me turning up. Uh, I'm no one that gets affected by anything outside of that. So it, it doesn't honestly, it doesn't really make a difference to me where I fight or how often or that. But ideally, I'd like to be more active and, and that would probably push my performance up a little bit. But hey, what can you do? Everybody's in been in the same boat recently and I can only fight as, as I'm allowed to be the pandemic going on and stuff. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned Chris Duncan. How heartbreaking was it to see that fight fall through yesterday? So Chris has been on the messenger to me back and forth. And as, I, as I've said before, he's been my one of my, main, well, my main training partner for the last five to six years. Uh, so I've seen him nurture and grow right through. And he was signed to Bellator just before he had his opportunity in Dana White's contender series last night. And and the guy missed weight before and a half pounds. So then he was he was telling me about that and I was like, listen, don't worry about it. I was like, you're gonna get paid extra and it looks worse than him. If anything, it just makes you look better. It's not like you're gonna say I'm not fighting. Uh, so if anything it's shining a better light than you, uh, then he takes me back like an hour later saying the guy's pulled out. And I was like, Cool, even better, you've been paid money for nothing, you've been paid for a weight cut. I was like, no doubt they'll get you rescheduled. Uh and it puts them in a unique position because in the UFC or Bellator or any of these big organisations, it's pretty hard to stand out when you're coming up as a new guy. So he's in a unique position with a unique story, and I don't think there's any any shade can be shown on him uh, when he goes out there and eventual performance and gets his win. If anything, it just makes him look better. So I think it's put him actually in a better position than he was in. Maybe not for him because he obviously wants to fight, but... In the bigger old scheme of thing, I always tell him to look at the bigger picture. You've got to stay positive, and I think everything's going to work out great for him. He'll be just fine. Andrew, go ahead. Uh, hopefully the result goes your way this weekend. Bellator comes back to Dublin in November. Is that something you'd be interested in, in joining the card on that, and who would you like to face on that? Uh, I think I already I said to Bellator this week, I think I said to do the matchmaker, uh, if anybody falls out around about my weight class, 
and they'd roll me to a catch weight because I wouldn't be cutting down to 146 again that quick. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, so if, if anybody put, anybody pulls it around my, my weight class and they roll to a catch weight, I'd be, I'd be more than eager to jump on and get get paid again and get to scrap so soon. And I've fought in Ireland before and the crowd's been amazing, so I'd, I'd look forward to it. James, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me now? Hear you now, aye. Ah, yeah. Uh, so, James Lee Hall, MMA Island. Um, you've mentioned that it was two years since you've last been uh, you've last you've been out there. Has the long layoff is it that motivating you to just get in there and just just fight basically? Uh, really, it's pissed me off more than anything. I've been doing no interviews, no social media, nothing. And if anybody seen me about about this hotel this week, I've been like a bear with a bean beanies mouth. I'm just not happy at all. I'm just. I'm looking forward more to fighting than anything, just getting in there and making that walk yeah. and, and getting to fight. But as usual, I turn up to fight week full of beans, happy, happy to be here. But it's, I just feel like something, something's got to go wrong. The way the world's going right now, I'll no believe it till I get to that walk. So I'm probably a bit anxious and, and eager to just, I'm just concentrating the fight. It's like I've got blinkers running, I'm not really paying attention to anything else that's going on. I just I just want to get in there and fight. It's, it's just, it's pissed me off it's took this long. So... I'm not enjoying fight week as I usually would because I'm more focused on fighting. I just want to get in there. It just seems like it just seems like something's going to happen. I'm just I'm just waiting in it. But hopefully everything goes to plan and I make that walk. Yeah, certainly. I look forward to seeing you Friday night. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Kobe. Hi, Robert. Kobe Pro Sports Podcasters. Uh, considering the layoff, has it been a tough management of weight? Is it a tough cut this time or no? Nah, as I've just said in a previous interview, it's like it's like a lifestyle for me. It's not like I'm in and out of shape or I'm overweight ever. If you look at any of my social media posts or the, my life in general, you'll see I'm a pretty active guy. I'm always in shape. I'm never out of shape. Uh, and the weight cut's just a pain in the arse, the same as any other one. It's not like one's easier or one's worse. It's just you just want to get over and done with it. It's just shite, in it? It's, if you've ever done one, you'd know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm on track to make weight. I'm sitting here the new probably like six or seven pounds over. So I'll okay. be happy tomorrow if you had to speak to me this time tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and and stylistically, it looks like the two of you match up real well. This could be kind of a fireworks type fight. You've mentioned fight the night a few times. You plan to go out there and really bring it to him? Well, I don't, I don't even think I need to bring it to him because the way he fights, he marches forward anyway. He kinda, he's on the front foot all the time, so I'm not going to need to go and look for him. So I'm going to plant my feet in the middle and, and I think he's just going to plant his feet and we'll see what happens. And, and But I know if I, if I connect and I, and I land on him, his, his, night, his lights are going to go out. I know that for a fact. Uh, if you've seen any of my fights, I'm not, I'm not shy to get hit and I'm not shy to get put in my ass either. But one thing, I get back up. Uh, anybody I've ever connected with, Except for Dan Nelkins, <laughs> as uh, as went down, so uh, I'm pretty confident in my hands. I'm pretty confident for for land one or two shots. It's it's going to do right on, mate. Manage then he's going to do to me. Right on. Looking forward to it. Cheers, mate. Mills. Hey, how's it going, Robert? This is the MMA locker room here. All right. I have a question for you. They always say, you know, you are who you practice with. You are who you train with. Coming out of American Top Team, you train with some of the best uh, MMA athletes out there. Do you guys derive a specific game plan for Fisher, or do you just um, prioritize your weapons and just try to focus on you? Uh, well, if you've done your research, you would know we can't travel to America in this pandemic, so I've had to do it back here home in Scotland. Uh, it's the first training camp in, I think, six or seven years that I've not been over to American Top Team for a camp. But again, I know I'm confident in my abilities and... And if I turn up and fight night, all I, all I need to do is perform to their abilities. Uh, so it wouldn't matter really where I train. I suppose it's much better if I'm training away from home in the sun, uh, surrounded by world-class facility. But I've been here, I've been at my, my local boxing club, I've been at my local MMA club uh, back in Scotland, basically back to my roots. Uh, just training as hard as ever. And as I've said before, Chris Duncan's one of my, my main training partners. Uh, and he's... He's a he's a handful on his own, and but it's worked out. We're fighting both at the same same week, so we've been pushing each other all the way through this fight camp. So it's the first time I've done one in Scotland in a while. But honestly, I've I've not felt any different. I feel I've I've enjoyed being in my own bed a little bit more. 
All right, Robert, thank you very much for the time. Good luck on Friday. Cheers, thanks.